I do love Zoas. I love Zoas. YouTube, what's up? Back again in the frag box. My name is March, and I want to talk to you today about Zoanthid. Okay, the secret to keeping Zoas. That's what I'm going to share with you. I don't know if they're really secrets, but I'm going to call them secrets. I'm going to show you also in this video the basement here at frag box. Ooh, let's go to the basement. Here we are in the basement. This is a. I'll just quickly show you. The sump that runs basically the entire store. A lot of our systems, are, our tanks are connected. Our water flows from downstairs into this uh, eight foot sump down here and then pumps its way back up. And we got a couple acros, nice acros and some chalices that seem to do well down here under T5 lights. And I think they do well because we don't really touch them and they get a lot of nutrients from the system. It's gonna kill the flow on our handy Apex controller. Okay, so Zoas, Zoanthids, Pallies, Palithoas, lots of different names. I'm just gonna call them Zoas throughout the video. But I really love this coral. Um, I think they're really fun to collect. So there's lots of different names. Um, this is red oxide, and there's scrambled eggs, and there's some blue-eyed blondes, super saiyans, original dragon eyes. I mean, there are limited varieties and colors. They are fast growing, generally. They are non-aggressive, so zoas can be against other zoas like this, and you can make kind of cool gardens, and they're not gonna hurt any other coral that they touch. They are adaptable and pretty easy to keep. So high light, low light, high flow, low flow. Zoas do well in just a number of conditions. And I think that's what makes them probably one of the easiest corals. They're a soft coral. So they don't consume like elements the way some of the other corals would like hard coral. This is some nice digi here that's gonna consume calcium. The Zoas don't really need uh, the same sort of uh, calcium and, and those kind of requirements as, as other corals. So that's why I really, really like them. I'm going to start with the first topic, which I guess is lights. So zoas are really adaptable. High light, low light, they do well generally in a lot of different conditions. With some exceptions, like I find the hornets here. These are the blue hornets. They, in my experience, do not like high light. But cor uh, certain species, uh, types of zoas, like the sunny bees, will do well in high light and low light. I'll give you an example here. These are the uh, what we call interstellars. These are growing under, what do we have? Radeon G4 Pros. I have the same ones here growing next to SPS, to Acropora. Look how great they look under very high intense T5 lighting. They look arguably even better than they do under the Radeons. These are the Pandoras and literally right beside our, our SPS coral, crazy par levels. And they look, yeah, arguably better th here than they do even under the LED. So Zoas can do well, low light to high light, I would say, Generally, put them low to medium to do well. Wherever you stick them in the tank, they usually will just do well and begin to grow. And what happens is they'll change the size of their head and the color will change based on the light. So if you stick them under high light, they'll get smaller and brighter. And then if you stick them under low light, the heads actually get larger and a little bit duller. So I'll talk to you now about flow. I find Zoas like moderate to even high flow and it helps to keep their bodies clean of any detritus and they'll open up fully even in like really high flow conditions. So this tank right now I have the flow off just to show you, um, you know, for the purpose of the video I got the flow off but there's lots of power heads. The flow in this tank is quite extreme and it keeps them super happy and they wave around in the flow. So I would say moderate to high flow um, for best results in keeping the Zoas. Another tip I want to talk to you about is dipping. So I think you should dip any coral that goes into your system. It's always a good practice. Uh, coral RX or Revive from Two Little Fishies. But any zoas that are going into our farm system go through four to eight weeks quarantine in this much smaller system. So we dip them and basically monitor them. All of the corals that were growing out over, the, over there started as somewhere between one, oh sorry, one and four heads. So they go in here. We dip them and then we just we just watch them to make sure that they're 100% pest free. And why that's so important with zoas over other corals, because zoas have quite a few uh, pests that eat them. So there's a zoa eating nudie branch, which will completely devour them. That's all they eat. There's zoanthid eating spiders. There's zoanthid eating crabs. And then there's this one kind of cool sundial snail that also eats zoas. So 
Some corals have no predators that I really know of. Oh, there's some Aptasia here. See, this is why we quarantine stuff, so that that kind of stuff isn't getting into um, our coral beds. But yeah, we'll deal with those. Anyways, so let's have four that I know of. I'm sure there's more. But you really want to dip your zoas, and they're so tolerant to dip, like you don't have to worry that you're going to hurt them or kill them in a dip. I do twice the strength, and sometimes I'll even do it in fresh water. I know it sounds crazy, um, but you're not going to hurt them. They close up and they open up, usually same day or the next day. So don't be afraid to dip hard when it comes to zoas. So another tip I'm going to give you when it comes to zoas is try not to touch them. If you got them open and happy growing in one spot of your aquarium, unless you're taking them out to frag them, I can do a whole other video on fragging them because uh, it can be quite difficult actually sometimes. And sometimes it can be easy. But anyways, that's a whole other video. Leave the corals, leave the zoas alone. If they're happy in one spot and maybe they close for a day or two, that's fine. But I think in the ocean, you know, they're growing on a rock they're living in that spot of the ocean their entire lives. No one's coming and picking them up and moving them. So once you have them happy in a certain spot, I think one of the keys or secrets to keeping these guys is really being hands off and just leaving them alone. Last tip or secret that I can give you to keeping zoas, these are dirty little animals. They are like little piggies. Um, they do well in higher nutrient water. So if your nitrates and phosphates are elevated, you're gonna notice that your zoas just get happier and happier and grow faster. So in this system, we keep our phosphates and nitrates a little bit higher than you would normally keep uh, in a reef tank. So the nitrates are around 10 to 15-ish, I wanna say, and the phosphates hover around 0.1, uh, even higher than that sometimes. Uh, I gotta be honest, we don't even really test them anymore. I know they're elevated every time we look at them, but I feed very heavy in this tank, which is gonna lead into my next tip. But the zoas definitely appreciate dirtier water, which may make it harder to keep some other corals in here. So, you know, I'm keeping Monty right next to them in the same water with some other Monty and a few hard corals. But this generally is our soft kind of grow tank. And we find that the, the zoas just really like that, that dirty water, that nutrient rich water. A tip for zoas, these things love to be fed. So we feed a number of foods here in the system and vitamins. I just did the video on the, um, the reef energy. We feed that reef energy AB plus in this system and I can tell you for a fact, these guys love it. Not just the, uh, the zoas, the mushrooms as well. I've noticed an increase in growth, size, color. Everything's loving that Red Sea uh, reef energy. And I don't want to sound like a sales rep for them because I do not, I'm telling you, you'll see in the other videos, I do not normally endorse products like that. This one truly works. Everything is just loving it in the system. Anyways, we're talking about zoas today. I think feeding for zoas is really important. So in this system, besides the energy, I also feed Reefroids, I feed Live Phyto, and I feed Oyster Feast and Arctipods, all from Reef Nutrition, all, all awesome products. And then I feed heavy to the fish. There's probably 25, no, maybe 30 fish in the system. It's kind of a larger system. It's total volumes around 350 gallons, maybe 400 gallons. But I believe in feeding heavy, the Zoas actually like the, uh, the crap that's coming out of the fish and they're, they're consuming that. Last pointer or little tip I'm gonna give you on keeping zoas is like any other coral, they appreciate stability. So if you keep your nitrates high, keep them there. Don't go up and down. Temperature, salinity, alkalinity, all the values that are important that we're watching in a reef tank. Um, zoas, like any other coral, they really like stability. I should have done a video six months ago when I, not nearly, yeah, I basically crashed this entire system by making some rookie mistakes and making changes very quickly in the tank and the Zoas did not like it. I had them closed for weeks. I was really stressed out and losing sleep over it. Um, it was a number of large water changes that I did. I don't really wanna talk about that in this video. Maybe I can do a separate one, but Zoas definitely like all corals, I can't stress it enough, like stability. So any changes you're gonna make, maybe I uh, something I taught you or something I said in the video you're gonna try, just do everything slowly. Keep in mind that whatever works for me, take that with a grain of salt. These are our experiences here in the store and they may not necessarily work for your tank. So whatever you try or decide that you're gonna do, just do everything slowly. Do half the recommended dose or quarter. And um, I think that's it for Zoas. If you guys got any questions about these corals, corals in general, beautiful blonde naso tank. Oh, I'm in love with this guy. We just got over our uh, 
our little fish disaster. And I don't think I believe in this 78 day fallow. I don't want to um, rock the boat with my opinions on ick, but uh, we had, we were adding fish maybe three, four weeks after that big disaster we had in this tank. And um, yeah, they look good. I'm not gonna talk about ick too much in this, at all, actually at all in this video. But yeah, hit us up. We are here in Toronto. Um, love talking about this stuff. This guy's beautiful. Yeah, my name is March. If you got any video ideas, please feel free to shout them out because I'm running out of ideas and I'm gonna end it with this beautiful chalice. I've been growing this thing for close to three years now. So it's getting close to, I think I could almost frag one or two pieces, but this thing is just a stunner. Thanks for watching guys. Happy reefing and uh, happy holidays.